Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome, beloved friends, to the Threshold Sunday Meditation. Our meditation today coincides with the auspicious occasion of Imam Ali's Maulid. And uh, our Khalifa Mahmood and I have the honor of uh, sharing Imam Ali's teachings with you today. So let us begin with the Fatiha and the silent meditation. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Alhamdulillahir Abdul Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Raheem. Malike Yomiti Iyakana Udua Iyakana Spain Edina Sirat al Sirat al An Anta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليه ولا الطالين Let us bring our finest attention to our breath. لا إله on the outro. Clearing our hearts of all that is other than Allah. Illa Allah on the in breath. Filling our hearts with the fragrance of the beloved. La ilaha illallah. There is only one. Love, Ilaha, we let go of all our attachments. In the love, we fill our hearts with the one. The one who comes by whatever name we call him. The one who answers all our prayers, spoken and unspoken. The one who is incomparable, yet reflected in all of existence.
La ilaha illallah. We dive into the ocean of oneness. La ilaha illallah. We dive into the ocean of love. La ilaha illallah. We lose ourselves in the ocean of oneness. I would now like to invite Al Khalifa Mehmood to speak about the teaching of Hanukkah. Thank you, Shaza. Assalamu alaikum, friends. 
It's good to be together today, and I would like to convey the greetings and blessings of our Sheikh and Sheikha who are in Hawaii. They sent a message yesterday wishing us the blessings of being together today. So, <clears throat> as Shazra mentioned, we are at the time of the birth of Imam Ali, the commemoration of his birthday. And let's sit with him for a while and see what blessings will come to us through him. Ali is a, is, the, is a remarkable soul. His name means one who is exalted, who is high. And he is indeed a towering figure in, Islam, in the Islamic tradition and is second only to the blessed prophet, peace and blessings upon him and his significance and impact on Sufism. Our Mavlavi path, as well as almost all the other Sufi paths, trace their chain of transmission directly back to Imam Ali and from him to the Prophet. <clears throat> Ali was Prophet Muhammad's younger cousin. And when he was born, the Prophet was already a grown man with his own family and children. And the Prophet and his wife Khadija decided to take Ali into their home and raise him among their own children as one of their own. So he grew up, grew up as one of the family and had a close and loving relationship with the Prophet. And when the Prophet received the first revelation, Khadija was the first one to believe in the truth of what he received. And she was closely followed by Ali, who was a young boy at that time. Yet he had the capacity to witness and testify to the truth of, truth of what he heard from the Prophet. And since that time and throughout the next 23 years of the mission of Prophet Muhammad, they had a profoundly close and loving relationship in which Ali received deep spiritual training and insight from the Prophet. Because as we know, without love, it's very difficult to receive, much less learn what is to be offered by this tradition of ours. By the time Ali was in his late twenties, he had developed into a man with great wisdom and a remarkably noble character, rooted in love, justice, trust, and vigilant self-knowing. He also became a great warrior and an extraordinary swordsman. The Prophet famously declared, I am the city of wisdom and Ali is its gate. And he also said, I am of Ali and Ali is of me. To get a sense of what Ali carried in his heart of the teachings of the Prophet that transformed and developed him, here are a couple of examples of the kind of guidance the Prophet gave him directly. The Prophet said to him, there are three qualities of noble character. That you forgive those who wrong you. That you maintain your relationship with those who cut you off. And that you be gentle with those who hurt you. And he also said to him, shall I tell you who is closest to my own character? The one who is best in character, greatest in tenderness gentlest with his kin and severest in extracting justice from himself. After the Prophet passed, Ali in turn continued the tradition of passing on the deep prophetic wisdom to his own children and to his closest companions, following the same tradition of the Prophet and that has been passed on to us today, as we still are carrying that same method and form of teaching. And this established uh, the, the uh, foundation of the Sufi path. One of these close companions was a man named Kumay, who was one of, Prophet, one of Imam Ali's most constant of companions. And here's an example of how Imam Ali taught Kumay.
One day, Ali took Kumail ibn, Zay ibn Ziyad on a walk through the graveyards and out into the desert. After breathing out a long sigh, he said to him, O oh, Kumail, hearts are containers, the best of which are those that are most aware. So preserve in your heart what I'm about to say to you. People are of three types. There are those who have divine wisdom. There are those who are seeking wisdom and are upon the path to salvation. And there are those of the barbaric herd who sway with every wind and follow anyone who shouts out. They have not been illuminated by any wisdom, nor have they found refuge in any certain support. O Kumail, wisdom is better than wealth. Wisdom protects you while you have to protect wealth. Wealth is diminished when you give it to others, while wisdom increases in purity when you share it. Whatever is produced by wealth decays as wealth perishes, while the fruits of wisdom abide. O Kumail, wisdom is a religion to be followed by which a person gains obedience during his life and beautiful remembrance after his death. Wisdom governs while wealth is governed. O Kumail, the hoarders of wealth perish while still living, while the Gnostics remain present throughout time. Their forms are missing, but their examples remain in the heart. Here, here, and he pointed to his heart, indeed is a trove of wisdom. I wish I could, I could find those that can bear it. I have found those that can copy it, but cannot be entrusted with it. They use the tool of religion for worldly gain, and they would use God's favor to impose themselves upon his servants, and they would use their arguments to dominate over his friends. I have found those that have no insight, who are swayed by the conveyors of truth. Doubt spread in their hearts at the appearance of the first uncertainty. So neither this type nor that is fit to be entrusted with what is in my heart. Neither are those I have found who are consumed by pleasures, easily led by desires, or enamored by accumulation and hoarding. These are not fit to be entrusted with religion. They're more like stray cattle. This is how wisdom dies with the death of its bearers. Oh my God, indeed, the earth is never devoid of those who stand for you upon firm proof. They are either well known or hidden so that God's proofs and evidences shall not end. How many are those and where are they? These, by Allah, are the few in number, but of the greatest esteem with God. Through them, God preserves his proofs and evidences until they can entrust it to those who are worthy of them, and until they can plant it in the hearts of those that are like them. Wisdom has propelled them to truthful insight until they have reached the spirit of certainty. They find easy what the decadent find hard, and they find intimacy in what the ignorant find alienating. They partake of the world with bodies whose spirits are attached to the most elevated of stations. These are the vicegerents of God on his earth, and they are the callers to his religion. Oh, how long, how I long to see them. You may go now, Kumail, if you wish. Shazza? Mehmood just shared with us Imam Ali's discourse on knowledge. And surely this knowledge that Imam Ali is speaking of is the knowledge of Tawheed the knowledge of the real, the one, from which all knowledge flows. 
I would like to share with you a teaching of Imam Ali's that has anchored Tawheed in my heart and in my life. Imam Ali is on the battlefield. Battle is about to begin. A Bedouin approaches Imam Ali and says, O commander of the faithful, do you say that God is one? The people around Imam Ali are astonished that such a question should be asked of Imam Ali at such a time in such a place. They say, O Bedouin, do you not see how Amirul Mumineen's heart is divided with cares? However, Imam Ali's response is, leave him, for surely what the Bedouin wishes is what we wish for the people. And there on the battlefield, Imam Ali delivers a discourse on oneness, on Tawheed. Imam Ali wishes for the Bedouin and for all of us to know that oneness, Tawheed, is not an abstract concept. It is something we must live in all spaces, in all states, and at all times. The question that arises for us is, how do we do this? And the meaning of Tawheed itself contains the answer. Tawheed is a verbal noun. It means affirming one, or as Mehmoud Khalifa translates it, making one. Imam Ali confirms this when he says, Man araf Allah tawahhad. She who knows Allah integrates herself. So to know the one is to make yourself one. The word Imam Ali uses for integration is tawahhad. The Wahad and Tawheed have the same root in Arabic. The word integrity in English also captures this perennial spiritual insight because it means both having strong moral principles and a state of being whole and undivided, implying that strong moral principles become possible from a state of being whole and undivided. We live Tawheed by integrating ourselves. How do we make ourselves one? How do we achieve the Wahad? I have found it of great benefit to hold this question in my heart. And at one level, the answer to this question is that we engage in all those practices that are recommended to us by Sheikh Kabir and Anna Kamil on the spiritual path. At another level, what unfolds as we hold this question in our hearts is deeply personal. Perhaps there are as many answers to this as there are believers in Tawheed. The Beloved has provided so many doors, but certain doors are more accessible to us than others. I was reminded of my time in Mecca. There were so many doors, all leading to the Kaaba but we would enter by the doors that were closest to where we were living. So I would like to share with you some of the doorways to Tawahad that so far appeared to me as I continue to hold this question in my heart. One door of it, doorway is Marifat of Allah, or knowledge of Allah. Imam Ali says, the first step in religion is knowledge of Allah, Marifat. The perfection of knowledge is to confirm Allah, the Sdeek. The perfection of confirming him is to profess Allah's unity, Tawheed. The perfection of professing Allah's unity is sincerity, Ikhlas. There are these amazing discourses about Allah by the Prophet, by Imam Ali, by the ahl bayt by the Awliya, the friends of Allah. And I have to confess that I would read through them very quickly, thinking that these are powerful, beautiful passages, but they're not really going to help me in any concrete way on the path. They are above and beyond what I can really hope to comprehend. But this teaching of Imam Ali's made me go back and read a discourse of our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, when he was asked to describe Allah, and read some of Imam Ali's discourses on Allah. 
and it dawned on me that it was actually very important to read these discourses, to read them slowly, letting each line enter the heart, because it helps to sweep away the delimited concepts of the beloved that we have in our hearts. And of course, they will arise again, but this awareness of our conceptions of the beloved as delimited, our awareness that the beloved is in and beyond our concepts deepens and the experiential understanding of Tawheed deepens. Another doorway is ikhlas, sincerity in action. You will remember that Maulana says at the beginning of his account of Imam Ali's battle with an enemy, Azali Amuz ikhlas amal, shire haq radan muthar azdaqar. Learn purity of action from Ali. See how the lion of God was free from fault. Imam Ali says, ikhlas is the perfection of Tawheed. He says, ikhlas is to make purely for God your action and your knowledge, your love and your hatred, your taking and your leaving, your speech and your silence. Imam Ali throws down his sword when his enemy spits on his face because anger rises in his heart in response to this humiliation. His nafs rises up. He is not in a state of integration of the Vahad. So he realizes that he would no longer be acting purely for the sake of God. And he steps back. He risks his life, but refuses to do something which is no longer for the sake of God alone. So living Tawheed means asking ourselves in each moment, if I were to do this for the sake of God, what would this look like? How would I do this? And if this is daunting, we can also rephrase this and ask, what would I do from a place of love? And when we can bring this consciousness to bear on our intention and our actions, it has a purifying and integrating effect. A third doorway is the Masnavi, which has been called the shop of Tawheed. At the beginning of the Masnavi, Maulana tells us to listen to the story of the reed and he tells us that it complains of separation. And the separation from the beloved is experienced within us in the, as these separate parts of ourselves. And it's as if Maulana has taken all these parts of ourselves and given them a voice. We are the parrots and the donkeys, the kings and the beggars, the charlatans and the saints of the Masnavi. And through these characters of the Masnavi, we recognize this cacophony within ourselves. We begin to know these selves within us. And the paradox is that this recognition of these voices itself initiates a process of integration held in the loving embrace of the one. Our sense of being a part of this ocean of oneness deepens. Our Khalifa Khadim talks about this process with this wonderful metaphor. She says these parts of ourselves are running around like little chicks. And as we open our hearts to the Masnavi, it is as if they are being lovingly gathered by the one. The Masnavi leads us to the truth of La ilaha illallah. Allah is the one and only reality transcendent and imminent, beyond all things, and manifested by all things. And everything in existence is an ayah, a sign, pointing us to the one, there to help us remember the one, there to help us love the one. It says in the Quran, we will show them our signs on the horizon and in their own souls, so that it be clear to them that he is the real. A fourth doorway is the we experience. Maulana says in the Divan Shams, as long as you are in you, you are a grain, a particle. But when you mix and unite with others, when, then you become an ocean, a mind. When we can connect with the creation around us, with our hearts, whether it is with human beings of all shapes and sizes and colors, as we circle the Kaaba, or when we are thoroughly immersed in the dunya on a busy street, 
or connecting with the trees, the birds, the earth, the earth we walk on, the cup we drink from, knowing that Alhai is running through us all, that we are all atoms vibrating at different frequencies of love. Then too, we can take, have a taste of integration inside ourselves. There are times when this happens spontaneously, but we can also bring our hearts to this state by consciously thinking as we look around us, that everything around us, just like us, is a sign of the beloved, pointing to the beloved, held by the beloved, dissolving in the beloved. A fifth doorway is no complaints. If everything comes from the beloved, then what are we complaining about? And who are we complaining about? Maulana says in the Divan Ishams, learn the secret of happiness from the prophet and be happy with whatever God gives you. If you are patient and content with whatever God gives you, if you are patient and content with whatever happens to you and do not complain, instantly the doors of heaven open. And a sixth doorway is service. When we efface ourselves, turning towards another to serve, we taste the world. When we give knowing that in giving we are receiving, that it is the beloved from whom the giving and receiving flow, that it is not we, but the beloved who is the only doer, it says in the Quran, and you threw not when you did throw, but God it was who threw. Crossing the threshold of this doorway, is to also to know that everything created by the beloved is in service of everything else. And a blessing from the beloved is that when we walk through any of the doorways of the wafat, we can sense this integration within ourselves. I remember Khadim telling me to reflect on when I felt one, whole, undivided in myself. I'd never attended to this before, but now I do. And when we are in a state of integration or when we have a taste of integration, we can sense it. So dear friends, we are all on a battlefield like Imam Ali. We have these warring selves within us and we are invited to live for him, to bring these selves into oneness in the light and love of the beloved. May Allah help us to efface ourselves so we can be truly virtuous and embody those qualities that we wish the beloved to manifest towards us. Thank you. And now I will invite Mehmood to do the zikr. I mean, I mean, <clears throat> thank you, Shazam. In pre-eternity, before time, before place, we all heard a call and we answered, yes, you are. And since coming into this world, that call continues to resonate within our hearts, inviting us, reminding us to return back to our source, back to love. Allah answers all calls made in sincerity and truth. Allah, Allah.
we give thanks for the light under which we gather. For our peer, Hazrat Mavlana Jalaluddin Rumi, and for the generations of seekers and guides that have come before us, and for anyone who has been our teacher. We pray for the health and well-being of everyone in this circle, for our families, for our children, for our children's children, for our friends, for our communities, and for our world. And we mention at this time in a clear and audible voice anyone in need of healing. May Almighty God make our intention and awareness sound, and may the light of this circle be received wherever it is needed, by the breath of Hazrat Mevlana, by the secret of Shamsi Tabriz, by the generosity of Imam Ali, and with the blessings of Muhammad Mustafa, our unlettered prophet, mercy to all the worlds, let us say who. Who. Assalamu alaikum, friends. Thank you for joining us.